G'day guys, welcome back to Spacey's Arcade. Today we're going to have a look at what is the perfect screen size for a virtual pin cab, guys. And I think everyone comes across this challenge when they go and build their pin cab. What screen size should you get? And we can also talk about in another episode the type of screen and the benefits and so forth of that. But today we're going to look at just the size question because it's not quite as straightforward as you might think. So I'm going to take you through all the different sizes, the implications of each one so that you can make an informed decision. Now the first thing that you need to consider is we're looking right now at a real Tales of the Arabian Nights and ultimately for a pin cab what we would like to see in the standing position in front of the machine everything should look like it does now in the camera. And that's pretty important guys because we've got perspective going on and all sorts of stuff but it's a fixed perspective from standing in front of the machine and that's going to be important later when we look at and talk discuss graphics and how an actual monitor when it's laid out in the space how it's going to reproduce the graphics so that when it's viewed on this angle this perspective is going to be correct but let's talk about size guys let's talk about size if i swing around over here and we look at this screen upright. This is a 48 inch screen, guys. And this VPX table looks sensational. Um, and what you need to know straight away is that if we measure the screen from the top of it down to the bottom, it's about 102 centimeters long now if we look on the real machine if i now place the tape measure at pretty much where the graphics where i can see the graphics at the top and then come down here then you can see that 102 is just shy from the base of the machine here by the lockdown bar so Guys, straight away, a 48 inch screen is the right size one to one, give or take just a couple of centimeters there. Uh, if you want one to one pinball goodness on your VPX pin cab. And you know, I've seen a lot of Reddit posts and people talking about what size you should get and what, what does it mean to be one to one. One to one means that the ball is going to be the right size. So if I take a ball here and place it up against the ball on VPX, it's the same size, guys. And that's what it means to be one-to-one. -one. And you want that, right? You want that for the most realistic experience. Now, clearly, it's a, it's a couple of centimeters short. So what you could do is you could have a 50-inch screen which would actually make it all the way to the end and maybe a little bit more up to the up beyond the end there. And that would actually completely, utterly have the entire length of a real machine 100%, but perhaps just a little bit left over. Now, what's the problem with that, guys? We all know what the problem is. The problem is, is the aspect ratio of a pinball machine is not 16 by nine, in which case the 50 inch screen is gonna be wider than this and so is the 48 so it's going to stick out out the side so what do we do about that well first thing to notice is that on this 48 inch screen here as you can see you'll see that i've actually squeezed in there's actually space here on either side of the screen there's quite a big bezel on this monitor but there's also about an inch on each side here and the reason for that is because I've squeezed in to get the exact right aspect ratio so that when you lay that picture down the width of this is exactly the width of a standard Titan pinball machine pretty important guys because nearly every table I see and I've done this myself included is everyone stretches their play field to 
match a 16 by 9 and 16 by 9 is too wide. So if you do that over here, it's, it, it doesn't look completely wrong, but it is wrong. And you will notice it. You will notice that the, uh, the, the bottom apron here will just look strange or will look stretched. Now the other thing to note is that you can see here the ball looks a little bit stretched and so forth. This lies in the challenge of once you put the screen flat and you view it, from down below, the perspective of course will change and everything should sort itself out. And it's a real challenge for the table authors to get that perspective correct. So ultimately it's going to look like this. But if you think about it, when they do the graphics on the screen, they're doing it from a flat image up here. But it's not going to look exactly like that, because that's a different 3D perspective. And of course the models change down here. Now they do do it pretty well, and some authors do it better than others. Uh, it's a really tricky thing to get right, but we're going to look at that when we look at each of the screens and the implications of the size on perspective. So the next thing we're going to look at is my machine. So we take a look at my pin cab, guys, there's a couple of things. First of all, it has a pretty old 1080p 39-inch monitor in here, which actually has bezels that fit inside the case. And at the time, because I did this years ago, guys, I think it, maybe even a decade, right? It was a long time ago. And that was the monitor at the time that would fit just straight into a standard cab without doing any routing or any woodwork at all. So that's why I picked it up. It's been good up until this day, but of course, really, it needs to be upgraded. Now, one of the other things you'll see is that I put a real apron on here. And the reason for that is because the screen is clearly smaller than a 48 inch. But if I want the real size ball on here, then I need to crop in to the table. And you'll see I don't have the side blades on this table. They're cropped out um, because the whole table, I had to increase the size. And you'll see right at the back here, I'm losing the very top of the table. But everything else in here guys is still one to one. Now this is not ideal. I'd like to have just a little bit more at the back and clearly because this is a 39 inch perhaps a 42 or a 43 would sort out some of that. A 48 would be ideal but a 48 is going to come out the side of a normal cab and I don't want to build a wide body cab custom to fit a 48 or a 50. If, of course, if I use a standard cab, if I do upgrade it. So you can see guys that with the apron, what it allows me to do is that I've cut the screen off so I don't have to waste screen real estate. I don't have a screen here. The bottom of my screen is here. That gives me more space up to the end, um, but I'm still a little too short. So we're going to look and see and see if a 42 or a 43 may be ideal for this or do I go a 48 or a 50 and come out the sides. If I did do a 48 it would actually go all the way in here and under this box. I've actually dropped this box. It should actually be up higher and sitting on a piece of wood but when I built this originally I dropped it to sort of give it the illusion that there was less space at the back. The only other option, guys, is that if you don't crop in like I have on my table, then what you'll probably do is you'll shrink it and you'll make it fatter and it will just look wrong. Um, you might get used to it, but any pinball head that comes over will look at it and go, yeah, that's wrong. Whereas this is actually perspective and size correct, but it's obviously chopped off. All right, guys, so... The challenge that we have, if we have a 48 inch screen like this one, 
the width of the lockdown bar would be as wide as this here which again is just wider than a normal standard it's not terrible um, but you would have to get used to it and effectively you're working within a sort of a wide body uh, type size um, cabinet and we'll look at the, the, the specific sizes of the wide bodies because some of the wide bodies are slightly different when we go through the graphics in a moment all right guys, so let's now get into the detail and I will show you the difference between a 50, 48, a 42 and a 43 and which one might be best suited for this as an upgrade and which one you might want to choose to get the most realistic and authentic and perspective correct experience just like you would if you were playing the real table. Righto guys, so we'll start with the big 50 inch and if I put a the Toten VPX at a one to one um, correct normal ratio, then that's pretty much how it's gonna look in terms of the size. So you can see that you're gonna have dead space if you do the perspective correctly on a 50 inch, but you are gonna get the entire uh, length there. Now the other thing to consider is that if you had a data east wide body then the you might be able to still get it within the confines of that wide body the data east like a guns and roses it's a 63 centimeters across which is pretty wide for your lockdown bar it won't fit in a williams um super pin which is their wide body variant you can see there that it would actually spill out the side so you'd need to build a custom uh, case for it um, or perhaps you might be able to get it into a GNR but it's still gonna it will be it will be tight so that's what that looks like at one to one now interestingly if I get the real Toten machine and this has been perspective corrected and I'll explain that in a second and flick it over the top if we just flick between the two now it's going to look a little quite a bit different simply because there's reflection on the real photo uh, than the VPX one but if you just train your eye on one part of the image and as I'm flicking back between the two like even the um, the skill shot uh, little triggers on the right you can see that it's generally in the same place clearly the coloring is a bit different and we've got the reflection on the glass and there's different lights are on but yeah, between the real table guys and, you know, I mean, from an actual photo, again, perspective corrected to so that it is a, a rectangle like a TV, uh, it's pretty close. <clears throat> it's not exact, but it's pretty close. Now, what people would normally do uh, with a 50, and what I see it all the time, guys, is that they don't have it like this. They don't have the correct perspective, which is a real shame. And some people complain and go, oh, look, the 50 is too big, the 48 is too big, the ball's too big. Yeah, well, that's probably because you're stretching it. Um, and if you stretch it, then it's going to look like this. And when you look at that, you sort of think, well, it looks all right, doesn't it? No. <laughs> it's, it's stretched and it's not the correct perspective guys so let's let's stop doing that and get it right um, and have the right perspective now the interesting thing to look at here is if I put the real picture so this is the picture of like when we were standing in front of the machine and it sort of blended into the uh, into the other one if I take that other one out the way a second Okay, so now we have just exactly what we would see when we're looking uh, at the machine standing up in front of it, that single perspective, guys. And if I take the, uh, the screen we saw from Toten VPX and put it in exactly the same lay down perspective, then that's what it looks like. So you can see, again, if you flick between the two here, it's very, very good. It's very similar very much in the same place so again you know that's VPX that laid down will give you this perspective and sometimes people get a little bit confused about that uh, guys but you need to think about it very much like a road uh, sign on the road where you see an arrow on the road and if you paint that arrow 
uh, from a top-down perspective, the arrow is really long. But of course, as soon as you hop in the car and you look at the road and it's on an angle, the arrow looks really, really short. It's going to happen the same way here, and that's why it's really tricky for the authors because they've got to actually create the screen flat like that. And of course, then when it's laid back, then you get the actual perspective. So anyway, Totem's been done pretty well. And one of the things, the, the big giveaway for um, how well a table is done from this perspective point of view is the see the side you can see the side blades on the uh, on the image and you have to see that because again when you're seeing it in real life you're going to see um, you know you're going to see those blades you see them see them there in the in the in the perspective corrected one if you don't see blades it's not going to be right however if your screen is lowered in your cabinet then you will see your real sides and then you don't need the fake ones and then you could actually have the graphics pulled out to the you know to the full size of your of your screen uh, again but you don't want to go beyond what a normal cab would be otherwise it's going to look too big so anyway you know there's, there's all these little subtleties guys this is why it's not easy actually when you're setting up your screen a to get the right screen, get the right size, and then B, make sure that the perspectives correct are not 16 by nine, and then C, actually have a table that's been built with the right perspective in mind, and you've also got the ability to change the layback and VPX to, to further adjust the look of, and feel of the graphics. But I feel like it can come out to be pretty much one-to-one -one, uh, if all of those things come together, but again, it's not easy. All right, so the other thing that we'll look at on the 50 inch is, well, what about a wide body game like a Data Race uh, GNR, for example? So we put that on, and here we've got one from uh, the VPIN Workshop crew. And interestingly, they actually put on their little graphic there the 50 inch table. There you go, by VPIN Workshop. Well, <clears throat> would fit perfectly a 50 inch. Uh, monitor and there you would have the full one-to-one -one widescreen 50 inch pin the same size as a Data East Guns N' Roses. So that's the other thing you need to consider. Do you want to have you know play those big widescreen tables one-to-one? -one? If you do you're going to have to be up at the 50 inch 48 you'll get away with it if it's just a slight subtle difference. If we look at a super pin like a Williams super pin which is a, a, a thinner wide body then again, this is how it would look like on a 50 inch. You would actually, if you had the perspective correct, you would have black spaces on the left and right hand side if you corrected it up properly. But of course it's gonna fit nicely and you're gonna be able to play basically all tables, but it's just the width of the thing. And if you wanna have your hands around a lockdown bar, that's really wide. Again, the alternative would be to put it in a standard cab, have a standard lockdown bar, but then you just have, you know, the, the actual screen part sort of coming out the side of the cab where you build a custom bit of cab around that and still have a standard lockdown bar. I haven't seen anyone actually do that, uh, but that would be a solution to get the right size but still have a nice comfortable lockdown. It would look a bit weird, but it would play nice. Okay, so if we go from a 50 inch to a 48, it's not going to be too much different, guys. We're just going to lose a little bit off the top and a little bit off the side. So 48 still works pretty well as a uh, as a standard uh, play field. And if we put the Toten FPX on the at the right perspective, it will be just shrunk. Uh, we could shrink it a little uh, and still get the whole thing in. Of course, if we stretch it, it's going to look you know the difference between that and that. And again, I'd advise not to do that and not stretch it. Uh, or the alternative is that we could go in for a, uh, a crop and that would be the crop. So if we look at the full size, we just lose that very top bit up there. Uh, so not a lot if we just cropped in at 48. So that's, that's a nice solution guys, just to get it a little bit thinner. So it's just a little bit better than a 50 inch. You're not really losing much. Um, of course, I haven't talked about any of the sizes in between for a couple of reasons. One, you may have noticed I've, I've actually got an OLED and a QLED here, and both of those screens are actually 120 hertz, and that's another thing we can talk about another day um, in terms of the actual screen technology and having a 120 hertz screen as your best option. 
and they're the two main screens at the moment that are available uh, with, the, with the 120 that look the best. And if we put the GNR, uh, the wide body, again, this would only be cropped just slightly, um, and you're not really losing much there, so you'd still be able to do your wide body games in uh, on a 48. And if we just put the uh, the lockdown bars, again, a 48 should fit nicely within the Data East uh, configuration. Uh, it's still going to be too wide for a standard Williams wide body, so you'd have to still probably build a custom cab if you didn't use a Data East wide body for it. Okay, so now let's look at my little 39-inch screen, and I've got it here placed as if it was in the cabinet. And in fact, if I put the side rails on, you can see that this is a, a standard cabinet. That's my 39-inch. And you can see there's a big gap at the bottom, which is where I've got my real apron, and then there's a huge gap at the top. So I'm missing all of the space, guys. So um, what can you do with, with a smaller screen? Well, a couple of things I, I could have done. If I, shrunk, uh, I, if I shrunk the Titan down, then it would look like this, but clearly the ball's gonna be a lot smaller. Be the right aspect ratio, I'd have more black um, on either side of the table as well, uh, so that wouldn't really be a good option for me. I could actually stretch it out width-wise to give me more width. Uh, again, it just looks, looks horrible, and I could do what I showed you, which was uh, effectively put it in a crop, and, uh, and that's cropped the 39, but of course we're now missing the, the top part of the table and in fact if we bring the original table in you can see exactly how much I'm actually losing um, by cropping so you can see there that whole entire top piece uh, the side bar and of course down the bottom so you know that's that's what's going to happen if you want to keep the ball one to one and you're in a smaller screen but remember, this is a 39, and so we are missing quite a bit of real estate. I think it's pretty shocking uh, once we look at the GNR. Although, still, I don't have the side bars, so I still actually get most of the table in. It's not too bad for a wide body on a 39 inch. So clearly, I think we can do a little bit better um, than that. And I think now if we look at both the 42 and 43 inch, and again, the reason why I've chosen both of those, even though they're one inch apart, a couple of reasons. Well, first we'll bring up the 42. If you were actually going to go get an LG OLED 42, you can route the internals of a standard pinball cabinet and slide it through from the back. I make that sound a lot easier than it probably will be, guys, if I go that way. Uh, but you'd be able to do that without actually hacking through the side of the cabinet. So a... OLED 42 will fit in a standard cab. A 43 will fit perfectly side to side, but you're going to have to cut right through the side of your cab and slot it in sideways. You have to cut on both sides, and then you're going to have to try and mask that uh, in some way. So a better solution, you know, if, if you're going to do a custom cab, then you just make it slightly wider anyway to accommodate. But if you wanted a standard lockdown bar and everything, then you would, yeah, you would need to cut it through. So there's just two different sort of install options for you there. Of course, once it's installed, then it's done. So you just got to consider that as well. Um, but, you know, for me, for example, with a, with a standard cab, perhaps the slide and option of a 42 would be better rather than hacking through my graphics and everything that I'd have to fix up after even though it'll be a slightly bigger screen. So just a couple of things to consider between the two different sizes. Right, so with our 42 showing here, and then we bring in Toten again, um, and this is again shrunk down to a 42. If we do it stretched, then it's gonna look like that. It's gonna go from there to there. So it's not gonna look great. Not terrible, but it's still gonna be stretched. Or the best thing is, is we crop it in. Now you can see that that's you know that's jumped in quite a bit, but now we have full one-to-one -one pinball goodness, and you can see that I have got more than my old 39 uh, in terms of the total table at the top. We are still, of course, missing um, this much of the table. You can see there. 
uh, but it's pretty pretty good. Now the other thing that I can do, and if I did go this way with a 42, is I could add my real apron back, there you go, uh, and of course that just covers up the bottom part, and then right at the top, you know, I could put some MX addressable LEDs and down the side, and then, you know, effectively you've got a whole beautiful VPX with extra effects and stuff down the side and around the back. So that's not a bad option either, just to sort of complete the look and complete the gaps. And if we look at the GNR cropped to, 40, to a 42, then it looks like that. So again, we just miss a little bit of the sides. This is all the right, right size. Um, and so we're not missing too much. So that still looks reasonably good for wide body tables. And so if we go to a 43 now, guys, clearly we're just going to get that little bit extra. The Titan shrunk down would look like that. You know, a small gap on the side still that you would need. Uh, stretch it out. Uh, it's only a little stretch. Or again, crop it in. And then the crop on a 43 is pretty damn good. Not losing too much. You're still losing some. Again, it's only a one inch difference between the two, of course. Um, and if we go back to the full size table, then we can see that, yeah, we're losing a little bit off the bottom still and a little bit off the top, but it's only just the very top of the ramp there. Um, so that's something you could get away with and you would have the full real size ball. And of course, again, if I want to add the real apron, could put that at the bottom and those uh, LEDs around the outside and it would still be a pretty awesome setup. Uh, GNR, again, just got that little bit extra and um, that will still work really, really nicely. So guys, I think that's, um, that's everything that I wanted to show uh, for you guys. I think there's a few takeaways here. Clearly, you know, the 42 is a, a, a drop through the back of a standard cabinet without having to go through the sides. It's just a little bit smaller. And if you're going to crop it for the one-to-one -one size, you will lose a little bit more than a 43. 43 gets you closer to the real size, but you're going to have those cabinet considerations if you're going into a original cab. If you're building a custom cab, then that's okay, but your lockdown bar is going to be maybe a little bit too big, so you might need a custom lockdown bar. You want to go all out and get the full length of a proper one-to-one -one table, then you're going to need to go a 48 or a 50. And of course, the 50 also gives you the added benefit of one-to-one -one on the biggest wide-body tables like the GNR. Otherwise, you'd go a you know a 48, and that's pretty close. And the 48 gives you a slightly less of a wider stance. So, really, the answer to the question in terms of which is the perfect screen, they all have their place. They all have trade-offs and benefits depending on what you want out of a machine. So, I would just consider that in terms of you know from a size perspective. We can talk about the actual technologies, OLED, QLED, which would be better. I'm happy to do that, guys. And listen, if you want me to um, upgrade my VPIN, and if I put a 4K 120 screen in there of any size out of these, uh, I would have to upgrade the actual PC hardware as well, which means I'd take the whole thing apart, um, upgrade the PC, probably reinstall Windows and reinstall the entirety of VPX, uh, all the DOF effects, the uh, force uh, feedback surround sound, uh, and I, I could do all of that and then set it up for 4K 120 and document that whole entire process if that's something you want to see. And if you do want to see that, guys, please comment and share this video and like it so that I can see that there is interest in me doing something like that because I can do it from where to go and show the whole process. And if you want to contribute to the cost of that, which is probably going to be really, really significant, um, then please consider perhaps making a donation to my PayPal account or become a Patreon, and the links are in the description below. Um, that would be exciting if we did do that. If, we, if I don't end up doing that, guys, I'm going to carry on, obviously, with a lot of other videos and VR videos and all the rest of it. But I just really wanted to, to do this particular one because the question gets asked so much. Uh, there's no right answer, really, 
in terms of the sizes, but there are implications. The main thing for me though is please, I just want people to stop widening their tables. I'm going to stop doing it myself because I've been doing it and now that I've sort of brought it in and cropped in to my table, um, it's so much better from a pin cab situation, but now I realise that my 39 is just too small. So once I get it up bigger and I crop in, I'm going to be so much happier guys in terms of the experience that I have against my real pinball machines. And of course, as you know, guys, if you've been following the channel, I'm doing a lot of VR stuff and I'm seeing the beautiful, you know, length of table in VR and I still want to use my pin cab and I want to try and improve the, um, the screen size and aspect ratio and experience on that now. So that's the plan anyway, guys. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it was inform informative for you. Um, again, good to see your comments down below. Until next time, uh, take care of yourself. Ciao for now.